Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Sensei with a video here today bringing us a brand new Photoshop tip video for you guys to love and enjoy. So if you guys you don't know, in this video I have four really, really good tips that I think a lot of you guys are gonna enjoy. So regardless of how long you've been in Photoshop, there's some things in here recently and I've been in like Photoshop for like six, seven freaking years. So there's some things that I even learned pretty recent. So I hope you guys do enjoy them, love them. And if you guys are beginner, it's basically like a gold mine. So with that being said, I'm not gonna hold you guys too long. Please enjoy the video. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed it. Also, if you have any cool little tips you wanna share with me or if you end up watching the video, comment down below just like just share some love you know so with that being said enjoy the video all right homie so the first tool or action is known as blend if blend if gives you an amazing blending option that can truly cannot be achieved when only using blend modes like overlay and soft light blend if acts like a see-through option of blending either black or white values within your canvas while selecting the black cursor moving it towards the right hand side photoshop is saying whatever value of black while moving through the spectrum should be invisible and if you aren't a fan of hard transitions, you can actually soften it by holding Alt on your keyboard and splitting the anchor in half. Then all you have to do is move your split right anchor towards the white to soften it. I use this every time when working with really awesome grunge textures and even using it when I want to throw smoke into a composition. As something like soft light and overlay just kind of makes it look a little bit too much inside the graphic rather than a smoke texture and atmosphere really being a part of the graphic. It's one of the most underrated methods of blending it, but in my opinion, one of the best ways of doing so. All right, guys, so this next one is actually super, super, super simple, but it's worth pointing out if you guys know about it already. I'm sure if you guys are illustrators, you guys already know, but I'm talking about brush symmetry. It's incredibly easy to access as all you have to do is open your brush and then select the last setting right under the toolbar. You can then use vertical symmetry, which I do a lot when I wanna make my mascot logos, and all I have to do is really focus on one side because while doing so, my sketch actually comes in full because one side is being worked on and it's being perfectly matched on the other side. But even if you guys aren't illustrators or logo designers, you can also use this setting by switching it to spiral or radical, where you can change the setting and see how many times you want things to be repeated. And with that, you can make some really awesome abstract shapes that you can later put in patterns or just use as single concept assets. And truthfully guys, even if you guys aren't illustrators, it's one of those things you should definitely think about and just know because it has a lot more potential than you think and just not only for illustrators in my opinion. All right guys, so the next tool is known as Pattern Fill. Pattern Fill is super, super underrated as it offers a number of awesome ways to actually fill space and also making patterns rather than using a linear pattern method like heading to your libraries tab choosing create from image, then using the last pattern option there. It only offers these very linear patterns with no randomness to it. But with pattern fill, all you guys have to do is create a pattern by highlighting with the rectangle marquee tool, your given object, your icon, or your shape, and also make sure that your background is turned off. Then go to edit, define pattern, and save your icon. Then all you have to do is on a new layer, highlight a part of the canvas or the entire canvas with the same marquee selection tool, then right click and choose fill, then change your options to pattern, and also make sure that the script option box is turned on. There you should actually have a number of different methods to actually create patterns and textures, but one of my favorite ones to use is using brick fill. For whatever pattern option that you guys end up choosing, make sure that the color randomness and the brightness randomness is all turned off and set to zero. That way you guys don't have any weird background issues. You guys can create amazing patterns that have more character and fill space with a lot more angle and just an overall more attractive look than a linear pattern. All right, homies, so now for the last tool or option here, it is known as quick mask mode. It's honestly something I get asked maybe five or six times while I'm streaming, and it's just something I actually like to use when I'm cutting people out. So if you guys are like me at all and utilize the quick selection tool and not just the pen tool or even select subject to quickly cut things out or people, so besides using the Alt key to switch between deleting small areas and adding small areas to quickly fill them in, press Q on your keyboard or press the actual button below the foreground and the background color. And what happens here is that your canvas actually gets a coat of red by default and it's suggesting the fact that whatever is red is being selected and whatever is not red is simply not being selected. So all you guys would end up having to do at this point is using a brush, I like to use a 100% hardness brush, and switch between the colors black and white to fill and erase things. And in this case, black will be erasing and white will be filling things in. And then once you have the selection, you want to select the layer mask near your new layer option to erase around your selection. Then with the layer mask, you can still use the black and white to erase and fill things in as long as you're actually selected on the layer mask itself. And when you guys end up double clicking on your layer mask, it brings up an option where you can actually change feathering, contrast, and smoothness of your cutout. Even using things like refined edges to cut out hair and stuff. Most people know of subject select, but not many people remember the hidden options. 
it's one of those tools that a lot of people end up neglecting just because they don't have to actually use it and once you guys know how to use it it becomes probably the most valuable tool in photoshop in my opinion and that is the end of the video here today so if you guys did once again and like learn something let me know leave a like you know subscribe if you guys enjoyed it have way more content i'll leave like a link to like my tip videos on the actual little panel over there but regardless let me know once again in the comment section below if you have any cool tips that i can put in for like next videos future videos anything like that or you just want to share it please let me know let the whole crew know so with that being said i'll talk to you guys later so hq out you want to get a key smiling stay positive and stay freaking ready guys later peace